<laughs> Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. <laughs> And you can hear as you're passing through the, by the room, you can hear Rebecca getting a little bit better at uh, playing piano. It's just nice and cool. It's a little subtle thing, so you know when to pop in, back in on her. I'm glad that sound doesn't echo down the hallway. I feel like that would attract a lot of zombies. All right, we got a small key here. And I saw some bullets over here. All right, he's down for a minute. And you know what, I'm gonna reload because we got some trouble coming, I'm sure. This kitchen is nasty. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, here's a Tron, you, you know, a lot of the little things that I like either forgot about or didn't really know what triggered them. You're really good at that stuff, man. That's a, I definitely compliment you on that. Um. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a dagger. I missed it. You're right. I see it now. Oops. Yeah, boy. There it is. Boom. Thanks for reminding me about the dagger. Oh yeah, that's right. You know what? And I'm and I think that's why I automatically do it all the time because I think I actually Urzatron said in the chat that if the zombies in the F-shaped hallway where we went down and put the chemicals and we put the blue crystal in, if I didn't kill those zombies, they'd be banging on the door to get into Rebecca right now and, and try to burst into Eater. I think I had that experience once, way back when I first played this on GameCube, and I so I think I instinctively take those guys out, even though I know I don't really Chris, have to, or if I want to save ammo, I think I, think I, I still it. do it. Um, oh crap, I didn't mean to come in here yet, but it's fine. I like that you call her Becky, too. Um, That's 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 cool. I uh, yeah, uh, Rebecca Chambers. She's just a character kind of disappeared. You, she showed up in other modes like mercenary modes and um, in Resident Evil Five, and I think ex extreme battle mode back when they did that on Resident Evil Two, like one of the additions of Resident Evil Two when they added that, uh, which I really love that mode because I remember you could unlock Chris Redfield, and it was so cool to run around the police department with Chris Redfield. I really dug that. So here's Trevor's diary. This is him talking about, um, you know being brought over and uh, being locked in and Sir Spencer kind of turning on him and, and capturing his wife Jessica and his, and his daughter Lisa and hoping that they're they're safe somewhere it, it's really a tragic story I would actually like to read a a novel or like a comic book that's like a one-shot comic book that is oh that's right I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing this backwards <laughs> um, oops Urzatron. Okay, cool. You'll be around tomorrow night. So tomorrow night around my time, around 9.30 p.m. to 10 p.m., I'll probably come back on and do this. Um, yeah, and that's right. There are segments. They divided up the, the, the diary. I think the other diary is when you jump down the hole and you find his tombstone um, that was, you know, that they <laughs> creepily put in. And the tombstone has like a button on it that leads to secret areas. So, um, yeah, that's right. So you find more segments of his journal, which is cool. I like that they did that in this, in this version. All right, so we got to get this emblem and switch it out with the other one. More Indiana Jones business. Only no giant boulders will chase us down, which is, well, there will be that later on. <laughs> there will be giant boulders. Um, when we get to the tunnels, but uh, for now, there's there's none. Yeah, I remember that. Um, 
Yeah, Urzatron is saying in the chat that there's a secret room with um that you get like a, a closet key after you beat the game and uh and you can go into that art room and one of the paintings is actually a secret door. And that's something they, they changed in this one. Like it, that that room specifically or that art piece wasn't there in the original version. The the, the closet was in another room that you go to. Um uh, that you use one of the last keys to unlock, but they changed it in this one. They put it uh, as a secret door in that painting. So that was pretty cool that they they did that. And yeah, you can you can change costumes for your characters. So I think in this one in Jill, like you can put her in her Resident Evil Three Nemesis costume, um, which is pretty neat that they do that and come up. They always come up with goofy ones. though. you know, I mean that's kind of Japanese culture and stuff. They'll do something that's like really seems very over the top. Like they'll put you know like. Um, Rebecca in like a nurse outfit or something like that and you know they always do something that's like borderline kind of creepy <laughs> and pervy but uh but also I mean she's a medic so I guess it kind of makes sense too but that, that that's the excuse they use to justify it I guess um but yeah it's they always do variant costumes are a thing in Resident Evil which is always fun it just makes the replay because I think these games have a ton of replay value I play a lot of video games and a lot of them you know I'll play them once or twice and I kind of never really go back but this I really, really can always go back to. Um, and I like relearning stuff, you know, and that, that's why it's cool to also meet someone like um, uh, Urzatron here who is very helpful in, in you know, what's going on. Because I always like when I get to do rare things that, that I know not everyone gets to do, I try to spend some money if I have it on, on things that I could bring back and share with people. So, um, so we're trying to, I'm, I'm like 35 subscribers away on YouTube to get to 500. Oop. Oop. Jesus. Oh, dang. Jeez, all right. Well, you guys all know my, my history with dogs in this franchise <laughs> they they're usually the ones that kill me so i always try to like to, i like to do giveaways when i can um to thank people for you know for tuning into my 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 garbage and uh but being nice to me it's always really nice we live in a real screwed up world where uh where a lot of times we all like you know like to hate on each other or hate on each other's opinions and uh i'm trying not to do that I, i'm trying to get better I, I i used to be one of those guys online that you know, someone's like, oh, you know, like, Man of Steel was awesome. And, I, and that's like a movie, Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman. I'm not a big fan of those movies. And I used to get into arguments over them. And, and now I'm at that point now where I'm just like, I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. And, uh, and you know, I certainly like things that suck. And people, like, make fun of me for it. So I know the feeling. Uh, like, when it's when, when, you, when you have, like, the least popular, you know, opinion or something. So... So now I just like I just like finding other people that like the same stuff I like and nerd out with them. All right, here we go. This is Yawn, uh, code name Yawn, I guess, with its uh, because they all have like um, numbers and it's like a, you know, the M one twenty ones or something is uh the hunters, so they all have like um, subject numbers. Oop, here we go. Ah, uh, look at that thing, dude. Oh no, run. Don't get caught up in its tail. Ah, dang it. Poisoned. I am a moron. Yep, I'm dumb. Jesus, this thing is relentless. Well, poison. Uh, Chris, I need serum. Serum. I remember. I think in Jill's it. version, right back. if Just she gets bit there. and she's infected, I think she actually might pass out, and then you see someone's boot like walk up to her, and then I think she wakes up in the 
in the room that we're about to run to on the other side of the building. Um, I think that's, I mean, again, my memory on this game is a bit fuzzy, but if you're tuning in, thank you so much. Um, this is only my second date on Twitch and I figured, uh, after I played some Metal Gear yesterday, I figured I would get into a Resident Evil mood because I am very lucky to get to go to San Francisco on Thursday to, uh, to Capcom headquarters and play some new levels of Resident Evil 7 and hopefully I'll be able to, you know, YouTube that, um, that's my goal anyway, as long as, uh, I, I can't YouTube the footage most likely, but uh, hopefully I can YouTube the event, like maybe make a vlog or something of, of me going there. It's been a lifelong dream of mine to actually go to Capcom headquarters. Um, I, like I said earlier, I've, I've been a fan of Capcom since 14, 1492, which was one of the first games of theirs I played. And I played it on the original Nintendo and the Commodore 64. Um, and I've been a fan ever since. And then after that, you know, it was on to Mega Man and um, and uh, Darkstalker, Street Fighter, like Onimusha, Resident Evil, Devil May Cry. It's a fan of all their stuff, man. They release some really cool products. And I know as a as a Mega Man fan, we haven't seen you know any new Mega Man stuff. Obviously, I, I, I'm a little disappointed about that. I. I'll be honest, I didn't, I did back at one point, um, Mighty Number no. 9 on Kickstarter, but then due to, like, just financial problems, I had to cancel my, my, um, you know, funding of it, and, and then I hear, I heard a lot of complaints about the game. I, it still looks kind of neat to me, like, I still hope to one day play it, just being a Mega Man fan, um, and since we don't really have any new Mega Man games, I'm all for having a, you know, a knockoff or a substitute for it, especially one by the original creator. But I I just heard some bad, bad things about it and, uh, and watched like a part of a let's play of it and it didn't really blow me away. Uh, but I don't know, I might end up there at some point. Uh, I am, I've had three Kickstarter projects myself, all, all of which that got funded and uh and so i i'm all for supporting you know somebody's you know dream project to make uh even if sometimes some rewards i've never even gotten and i don't really care because there's a side of me that i didn't do it for that i just kind of did it to hopefully help them out sometimes people succeed in making their kickstarter stuff sometimes they don't but you know that's kind of the risk you take when you help fund a startup you know venture um sometimes it's a bad investment I'm just glad, I mean, my arm could look like Richard's right now, the way I got bit. <laughs> so, uh, let's, let's thank the stars for that one. You should be fine, because I gave you a shot of serum. But again, don't do anything that you wouldn't do. I'll try to remember that. I don't know, man. We're See, that's the other thing about this game, too. Why Zero is such a frustrating addition. God, I made it into um, is that I feel like right now she would be telling you about the events of of Resident Evil Zero, or she'd be she would mention like, oh yeah, umbrellas behind all this or whatever, because she kind of figured some of that out in Zero. Um, oh, here's where Jill first starts suspecting Barry big time. Um, It's not necessary to destroy stars. I have this weird remix album. I bought all the soundtracks to all these games. But there's this weird album that was only released in Japan that had like four tracks on it, and it was techno remixes of the Code Veronica theme song and like a couple other tracks. And one of them has that. Um, and I think actually in the main soundtrack of Resident Evil One, they put that in there too. They have Barry saying like, "It's not necessary to destroy stars," and then they play the the, the you know the music that's the theme of this building. Jill. Barry, um, I heard someone talking. Martian Cat in the chat says, wow, that that could be really cool. Yeah, I mean, just throwing it out there. Um, just message me and I should know, you know, in the next couple days if that guy is uh, is going to stick on the book or not or if his scheduling conflict or whatever. Um, but yeah, let me know. Hit me up on Twitter and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it. 
Um, and then Monomyth, after I wrote Monomyth, I, I did a, a book that was uh, actually produced by Dan Harmon, if you guys are fans of Community and uh, Rick and Morty. Uh, he, he was nice enough to uh, produce it, put his name on it, and we kickstarted it. And it was uh, successfully funded, and it's like an art book, and like a multimedia art book. It's really weird and out there, and it, it involves AI and, you know, robots taking over and stuff. And, um but yeah, so I always I try to write a little different. And then right now I'm working on Never The King of Neverland, which is like a sequel to Peter Pan. So I try to I try to challenge myself as a writer. Um, but I'm also I like trying different things to find out what I'm good at, what people like the most, and then maybe if they like that, I'll I'll you know stick to writing more of that. Oh, that's right, I can save here. Well I feel confident that we'll we'll kill this thing. Fashion, but high quality bed. Let's uh, equip this. You know what? Yesterday I got my butt kicked by this thing. I, you know what? I should get another health thing. Sorry, guys. I should play it safe. Um. Yeah, I really should, because this thing kicked the crap out of me yesterday. Um, we, I lived, but it's only because I think I brought in, like, three health things with me, and I used them all. I mean, there's a chance we could kill this thing really quickly, like, uh, with Urzatron's, uh, with the flame rounds and stuff, but just on the off chance I screw something up. All right, let's go fight a plant. Plant 42 is an interesting um, creature and, and, and design. I remember in the movies when um, I kept hoping to see, like, living plants. Like, e even if it was just, like, um, well, let's say, like, someone in Resident Evil 1, the movie, had, like, a, like, a, I mean, I guess they wouldn't really have plants. They're underground facilities, so they don't get real sunlight. Um... So I guess that I guess that makes sense that they didn't have any plans down there. But I guess in Resident Evil Two, when Raccoon City was taken over, I just thought it would have been cool to like maybe see, like a you know like a plant in the background like moving around or something. But then they they came up with the the idea I think in the third movie, when the planet was apparently a desert, but yet they were just driving around in Nevada anyway. And I'm just like, well, if you're driving, Nevada's already a desert. Like why you what like drive around Florida. Uh, or drive around, you know, like, uh, like, um, you know, South Carolina or something. It, if the planet's a desert, don't, f don't film in a place that's already a desert. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but, but I, I, they said like the T virus dried everything up. It dried all the, most of the water up and the planet itself was dying. And I'm like, I don't, but the T virus wouldn't do that. The T virus would rejuvenate the planet. It, it would maybe kill things, but it would you know, bring them back somehow. It would return plant life. Oh, Jesus. I missed with that first one. Oh. Oof. Dang, man. Urzatron was right. <laughs> As usual, three direct hits. And that's weird. So neither in this game or the last game did I have to mix the chemicals to make the... Uh, I mean, I guess I could have. Is that optional? Like, I guess I I could have gone in that room and mixed them and then, uh, and then poured them on the plant before we battled it. I guess I... I don't know. I, keep, I forget what... Uh, because I thought, like, oh, maybe I'll be captured and Barry will have to come in and then I'll play as Barry and have to go mix the chemicals or, like, yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember how that plays out. 
one of the many choose your own adventure paths you can take in this game. But now we're going to run into our commanding officer. So when we get back to that uh, room up here, I'll save it, and then uh, we're gonna, we'll, we'll take my break. So I think I think my uh, dog will need like a full Oscar. walk because um, he's looking pretty Joe. antsy right now, jumping around. So, so we're gonna take a nice That's 3 a.m. stroll through my neighborhood, I apologize. and uh, so that'll be about 15 minute walk for him, and then I'll come back and kind of unwind for about 15 minutes, and then I'll log back in at on at 3:30 my time. So like I said, 35 minutes from now. Uh, I'll log back in and we'll we'll play as much as we can. Maybe we'll play another hour or uh, two at the most. If if we make it to the the labs tonight, I'll probably stop there. Thing I can do tomorrow night before I go to bed. All right. Yeah, I always wondered what Wesker was shooting at, and uh, because in the old version, I it, because of the graphics, I guess I I couldn't really tell that they were the the bees. Uh, I think a friend of mine told me, he's like, oh yeah, those are the bees. I'm like, oh. And so in this one, when they put the bees in, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Because you just hear him firing the gun, you're like, alright, where's the zombie or spider he was shooting at? And, uh, but then you're running and you squish the bees on the ground. It's like, oh, okay. I, I bought a Dreamcast for Code Veronica uh, when that when that came out. That was the first system I remember that I was able to pay for with my own money. I was uh, seven, 16 or 17, and I had a... No, I was about 17, I think. Oh. Oh. Okay, and uh, that was the, you know, I had a job then, and that was the first, uh, oh, it's this thing. The first uh, console I was able to buy with my own money. So, uh, so and I bought it pretty much because I heard Code Veronica was coming out for it. I even bought the Japanese import of Code Veronica before uh, the American version came out. It was like a, came out a couple weeks before the American one, and I bought, it was my first import too, and we, we retrofitted my Dreamcast to play, uh, uh, imports from uh, Japan, which was cool, uh, and uh, and I played the game, and it was in Japanese. Well, the writing was in Japanese, the text and all that, but the actual um, the actual game itself, uh, the cutscenes were actually in English, um, English voice acting, and uh, and I don't want to spoil anything because I don't want to spoil the ending of this game because I know I have a couple people that are watching on my YouTube channel that haven't uh, haven't played these games or don't know really the stories of them. So uh, I don't want to spoil which character is in this one that returns in Code Veronica. But uh, on the Japanese box, that character was on the back of the box, <laughs> on the back of the case. So it was a total, totally spoiled, um, <laughs> totally spoiled it for me. Um, so that was, yeah, it was a bummer. All right, so I think it's, oops. Yeah, I think it's uh, northwest is what we want to point it to. Yep, that's, I think that's right. It's been a while since uh, since I played this, but some puzzles you remember. Oh, we got a cutscene here. I'll let you. I'll be quiet. You have to kind of wonder, you know, anytime you get messages from teammates of what's really going on. Um, Final Pie says, haha, I still have my boot disc for my Dreamcast. Yeah, getting through the Japanese can be tough in the menus. Oh my god. Not only that, but uh, the, um, the uh, yeah, trying to solve a puzzle in Resident Evil, especially in Code Veronica, <laughs> trying to solve a puzzle in, when it's in Japanese. Uh, it was a bit difficult. I remember I was trying to learn Japanese at the time just to help me because I planned on importing more games. Um, but yeah, so the reveal of the character who returns in it was spoiled for me. Um, but it was okay. I think I'm going to bring, for my flight, I think I'm going to bring some of the Resident Evil comic books with me. There was a couple different <clears throat> comic series too. Some that were only released in Japan uh, as mangas, like Resident Evil mangas, which were... Um, they did one in Code Veronica, which they Wildstorm. Thank God, Wildstorm, like, perked. Even though they didn't make any money on their previous Resident Evil books, 
they still spent the money and they bought the the manga and re-released it here in the U.S. in um, in four graphic novels uh, for called Code Veronica, and it was really good because the manga was like exactly the story from Code Veronica. It was it was great. Um, it was like a shot for shot, you know, translation into comic form or manga form and worked on a lot of levels. It was really fun to reread and re-experience Code Veronica and the story. Because, you know, a lot of times I just play these games for the story, and sometimes I don't want to just sit and play the games, and I just want the story. And uh, thankfully now we live on, in a world with YouTube and stuff, and I can watch someone else play it and on Twitch. But um, at the time when that book came out, I just would sit and read the graphic novels. Um, they also made a Resident Evil, Zero gra Resident Evil Zero series of manga comic books in Japan. But those never got re-released in the States, and they were never translated to English, which is a real bummer, because that would have been a cool series to read, too. Because um, the game, is, to me, is a little bit... It's probably the most frustrating Resident Evil game to play because of the mechanics of uh, you know, being able to pick up and drop things. You would think that is awesome, but it actually creates a whole another series of obstacles of having to go back and get stuff that you left in other rooms and everything but uh, but then so let's see we have first we have the five issue magazine series from Wildstorm uh, so it was like short story comics set in the Resident Evil universe and it was in a magazine format um, and that came out through Wildstorm and then after that they did a uh, throughout the magazines there were some characters that they created um, there was and there was like a, a kid who was like a a genius kid and he I think he got like recruited by Umbrella or something like that in um, in uh, in the magazines and then they created a series called Fire and Ice and like the two or three characters that they created in the magazines that were new to the Resident Evil universe those characters became a team almost like Avengers style like they all teamed up to go track down Umbrella and the the villain they fought was that kid genius and uh Umbrella gave him like his own laboratory and of course it goes to hell and there's an outbreak and these stars members come in and take it down so uh, and that's what and that's I, th I think they were stars or maybe they were called something else um, but so then they had fire and ice and that was a four issue series and um, and then after that uh, there was the code Veronica graphic novels and then after code Veronica graphic novels also from Wildstorm there was nothing else for a while and then it wasn't until Resident Evil 5 came out that uh, that they released a new um, series uh, called, uh, I think it was just called Resident Evil. And it was a six issue series that was uh, told, like it was t took place before Resident Evil 5. And it starred a different, it was like BSAA Charlie team or something. Or maybe that was what the other team was called from Fire and Ice. But there was like a team of BSAA agents that knew of Chris Redfield, but they, you know, they didn't work with him and it was a, a story about them. So that was pretty interesting that they, uh, did that, but that wasn't, I didn't honestly, I liked the art a little bit in that series, but it changed artists too, because that book got like really late. There was like a year between like issue three and four or something like that. Like it, it just took forever to come out, but that's typical Wildstorm with their books. I mean, Jim Lee was the guy who ran the company and that guy started to build a, a reputation for a while of being notoriously late with, with his books. So uh, it wasn't until he started working with DC again that he started, like, you know, cracking down and and releasing, like, Hush, I think was... Batman Hush was a monthly series, and I don't think he was late on that series, or maybe late one issue, um, which is pretty good for him. So he, he delivered 12 issues in, like, 13 months, you know, which is pretty good. And then he did a Superman story afterwards, and I think that one was only late because they did like a jumbo size final issue or something. So, um, so Jim kind of had that reputation at the time, and, and Wildstorm Comics did too. And they just were like, "Oh, we'll release it when we release it." And it was a real bummer because when they, when you try to time something like a comic book release to a video game release, you gotta you gotta release that book on time because it's very essential to the. Uh, to the, you know, help promoting the game. Thank goodness for these herbs. So when we go in here, we're, we're probably going to save again because, like I said, I I'm just trying to be safe. Yesterday on my first stream, I died. 
a couple times, and we had to replay like entire sections of the game. And I definitely don't want to, you know, put you guys through that who are watching this, and I don't want to put my YouTube channel through that um, more than once. So, so I learned, I learned my lesson the first time. So we will just over saving. I'm I'm okay with it. I don't mind. Um, yeah, this place is just damn creepy. Number of bandages with blood stains. So this creature we're gonna we're gonna see coming up is uh, her name is Lisa Trevor, and I talked about this yesterday. This house, this beautiful beautiful house called the Spencer Estates, that we're kind of exam going through. You know that I left, and now we're in this like little backyard house, courtyard house. Um, the the house built by Spencer was uh, designed by, uh, oh, check this out, daddy attached, first mom attached, second inside red and slimy, white and hard, not true mom wear. So this is again showing the degradation or the, the, the deformation of the brain, like as you're infected with viruses, uh, various viruses, um, if it's a slow process, if you don't die right away and then instantly become a zombie, uh, if you're infected while alive, you slowly decompose and you see this poor gr young girl's mind um, changing and this and I'm serious like this is a young girl she's like I want to say maybe like 12 something like that uh, Lisa is like 12 years old and they these you know Spencer just shows you what kind of monster Oswald E Spencer is who is the founder of the umbrella corporation and owner of the house he hired um, Lisa's dad um, who I, I keep blanking on his first name but uh, Mr. Trevor and he he was a, a you know like an architect and he, and he was also like very famous for creating puzzles and different things like that so his um he was invited after he designed all the essentially the traps or the or the foundations of what became all the traps in his house he was invited by spencer to the house with his family um to have like a dinner and stuff and then their like food was poisoned and uh, and and they were all like trevor himself was almost buried alive like he was put in a series a labyrinth where he had to just try to solve some of the puzzles to get out and he he didn't he didn't solve them he didn't get out and he died uh but his wife and his daughter were um, taken by umbrella scientist and oswald e. spencer and infected with the t-virus and the wife pretty much just died and became you know like a regular zombie or whatever uh pretty standard but something happened lisa uh being a 12 year old girl the virus uh she handled it differently. She was kind of unique. Uh, they, they, there was this thing in the old Resident Evil game where, like, one in, like, you know, 100,000 people had the ability or the, the genetic makeup to become a tyrant. And then one in a million could handle the nemesis parasite or something like that. So Lisa was, she's kind of unique in that way. Uh, and she could handle the virus for the most part. So she's something completely different. She's very horrifying looking. And to, and to know that when you're shooting this thing, it's a 12-year-old girl, it's really heartbreaking. Um, 